ברשות מוריי ורבותיי. As we started the program of how to enhance harmony in the family, we are talking about husband and wife, family relationship. And when the Torah talks about it, we talk about the first dispute between a man and a woman, it mentioned the concept of the snake. When the snakes comes to the woman and tells her, why wouldn't you eat from the tree, the forbidden tree? And the snake is using the tactic of a false imaginary explanation why the woman should violate the Torah, why the woman should not listen to God and to eat from the tree. When God is asking afterwards the woman, why did she eat from the tree, she says, And the woman say, Vatomer Aisha Anachash Ishiani Vaochel. The word Ishiani is a very unique expression that comes that comes over here in the book. Most of the interpret the, the comment commentary on the Torah say that and the snake deceived me, he lied to me. But the word deceive and lie in Hebrew is Shikir, Rima, Ishiani, one of the sages explains, he offered to, he gave me a marriage proposal. He told me, with me, you will have much better life than with your man. Based on this understanding, we're coming to a very big obstacle in happiness in our life and generally and in marriage life specifically, is when people are using their power of imagination to the wrong direction. The feeling that somewhere else is happier, somewhere else is nicer. As we say, the grass of my neighbor is greener, even though it doesn't have grass altogether. But these imaginary thoughts that somewhere else is better, makes people to feel very miserable and start to think about breaking, God forbid, the family and the house, the home that they built. Using the power of imagination, it happens a lot. I sit with couples and I see that because of the power of imagination, they don't understand who is the real aggressor and who is the victim. Because people have a tendency to create a vision or image of a victim when it's a real aggressor. And I start with a very, uh, very sad story that somebody comes to me and he told me that he is a very good husband and he has a very good wife, family, but his wife is not honest to him. And his wife has friends and she's in touch with them. And I, I told him that uh, when I spoke to him and I saw it's, it's a lot of imagination, I told him that he has to give me a proof to make a point. So one Friday, he calls me at two o'clock in the afternoon and he say, Rabbi, I have the proof that my wife is not honest to me, God forbid. So I told him, what's the proof? So he said, I was sitting home, preparing for Shabbat, and somebody called. So I pick up the phone and somebody spoke to me in Spanish. And I told them, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. So uh, he called me, you see, Rabbi, this is the proof. I say, proof of what? Somebody called you and asked, spoke to you in Spanish. No, it was, his, it was her boyfriend that is calling me. But because he heard my voice, he changed his tune from English to Spanish. I told him that he has a problem and he's not over here the victim, he's the aggressor. And uh, after a few years, unfortunately, when he separated from his wife and he married to another woman, and he had the same problem, then he came and told me, Rabbi, I think you were right. The power of imagination, which is the main power of the evil inclination, 
This is the um, one of the sources of all the problems in marriage life. Imagination can be used for good things too, and unfortunately for bad things too. When it's up, when it's used in a good direction, it can give a small tent. When husband and wife live lives in live in harmony, give them the feeling of living in a palace. And on the opposite side, it can make people who live in a palace, but there is no harmony and love, that like in a prison, in a place they don't, they don't want to be. So, the idea of the snake, which comes to separate husband and wife, and our Torah is very careful about it, that nobody has the right to interfere, to interrupt, to separate, husband and wife, because when another the chupa, and in the wedding, and the rabbi is blessing them, at that moment when they became one, nobody has the right to interrupt or to interfere and to make any kind of thing. As the Torah says, Gadol Shalom. It's a, see, it's a beautiful example that we have, and we're going to finish with this is when, at the age of 90, Sarah, the wife of Abraham, she got a, a message that she's going to have a baby next year. And she's, telling to, uh, and she's telling to herself that, why, we are so old, me and my man. And when God is asking Abraham, why did Sarah smile or laugh, he said, but she spoke about herself, how she became old, and she never, made, he never, God never mentioned to Abraham that he spoke about both of them as elderly people. And the Gemara learned from this, that even God didn't want to interfere and say something that might give Abraham a certain feeling about something negative that maybe Sarah told to him. So, so if, if the Almighty is careful not to hurt any kind of a relationship, any kind of level between husband and wife, of course it's our responsibility. I would like to uh, wish all of us to make our houses as a place where God is going to dwell His Shechina, His blessing among us, and each husband and wife, father and mother, man and a woman who lives together, will live with love and harmony, respect each other, and use all the imagination and the good power to the right direction and to become better people. Thank you.